The Israel Lobby and U.S. Foreign Policy Introduction America is about to enter a presidential election year. Although the outcome is, of course, impossible to predict at this stage, certain features of the campaign are easy to foresee. The candidates will inevitably differ on various domestic issues, health care, abortion, gay marriage, taxes, education, immigration, and spirited debates are certain to erupt on a host of foreign policy questions as well. What course of action should the United States pursue in Iraq? What is the best response to the crisis in Darfur, Iran's nuclear ambitions, Russia's hostility to NATO, and China's rising power? How should the United States address global warming, combat terrorism, and reverse the erosion of its international image? On these and many other issues, we can confidently expect lively disagreements among the various candidates. Yet on one subject, we can be equally confident that the candidates will speak with one voice. In 2008, as in previous election years, Serious candidates for the highest office in the land will go to considerable lengths to express their deep personal commitment to one foreign country, Israel, as well as their determination to maintain unyielding U.S. support for the Jewish state. Each candidate will emphasize that he or she fully appreciates the multitude of threats facing Israel and make it clear that, if elected, the United States will remain firmly committed to defending Israel's interests under any and all circumstances. None of the candidates is likely to criticize Israel in any significant way or suggest that the United States ought to pursue a more even-handed policy in the region. Any who do will probably fall by the wayside. This observation is hardly a bold prediction, because presidential aspirants were already proclaiming their support for Israel in early 2007. The process began in January, when four potential candidates spoke to Israel's annual Herzliya conference on security issues. As Joshua Mitnick reported in Jewish Week, they were seemingly competing to see who can be most strident in defense of the Jewish state. Appearing via satellite link, John Edwards, the Democratic Party's 2004 vice presidential candidate, told his Israeli listeners that your future is our future and said that the bond between the United States and Israel will never be broken. Former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney spoke of being in a country I love with people I love and, aware of Israel's deep concern about a possible nuclear Iran, proclaimed that it is time for the world to speak three truths. One, Iran must be stopped. Two, Iran can be stopped. Three, Iran will be stopped. Senator John McCain, Republican Arizona, declared that when it comes to the defense of Israel, we simply cannot compromise. While former House Speaker Newt Gingrich, Republican Georgia, told the audience that Israel is facing the greatest danger for its survival since the 1967 victory. Shortly thereafter, in early February, Senator Hillary Clinton, Democrat New York, spoke in New York before the local chapter of the powerful American Israel Public Affairs Committee, APAC, where she said that in this moment of great difficulty for Israel and great peril for Israel, what is vital is that we stand by our friend and our ally, and we stand by our own values. Israel is a beacon of what's right, in a neighborhood overshadowed by the wrongs of radicalism, extremism, despotism, and terrorism. 